all right let, let's 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 talk about how i feel like right here for what this is the chicago bulls are are in a weird position they could go either way i think they've made moves where if they want to rebuild they have kobe white josh giddy i would you trade kobe white i think you keep because it'd be a quick rebuild all you'd have to do is find the franchise guy or i as if demar derozan has gone and you're trying to move zach levine and you're trying to move vooch i, I like the idea of having stick smith because stick smith he's either a really good backup or he's a good bridge player if you need to rebuild and you you have dale and terry you have i get guys like Kobe White, Giddy, Pat Williams, Io DeSumo, Dale and Terry, Julian Phillips, Bit Team. And then you have people you can trade in Javon, Car Javon Carter, Nicole Vucevic, Tori Craig, Lonzo Ball, and Zach Levine. It might be hard to trade some of those guys, but you can go in either direction. You can be a play in, maybe a six seed, or you can figure it out. And. Chicago's already traded Alex Caruso. DeMar DeRozan seems to be leaving via free agency unless it's a signing trade. As I've said before, it seems like the Lakers, they can't do a signing trade. The Clippers, they're not doing it anymore because they spent the money that they would have, would have given DeMar DeRozan in a, in a sign and trade. And then with that being said, if those two are gone, there's the Miami Heat. And even if it's the Heat, it'd be... The only, I mean, unless they're trying to dish Tyler Hero, I just, I just don't really see a deal being out there for Demar Derozan. So I think they're just losing him uncomp, uncon, like uncompensated. So what do you do next? And we know they're just trying to dish Lonzo Ball. Do they call up a team like the Nets and they say take Lonzo Ball and Vooch, and we'll just take Ben Simmons and we're going to buy out Ben Simmons or just cut him? And he can go wherever for $43 million. I think they are they need to lean into the youth movement and the roster. Because if you trade everyone correctly, you can go into next season with Josh Giddy, Kobe White, Io DeSumo, and Dalen Terry as your, back, as your four guards. Then you have Buzelis and Pat Williams as your two forwards. You would probably have to go out and get some backups. And then you have Jalen Smith and Julian Phillips as your two centers, you would say. And then you trade Javon Carter, Lonzo Ball, and Zach Levine, and Vooch, and Torrey Craig. You, you have, like, Andrew Funk and on your out, but, like, we don't know how impactful they'll actually be. I just – what would you guys do and why? I, I definitely think it's interesting. I just – if the Bulls traded Lonzo Ball for Bruce Brown – I feel like you're just sending money off. And yeah, can you get him for a buyout? I don't know what you're doing with Zach Levine. Can you buy him out at this point? I don't know. It's I just think it's a very hard situation for Chicago. All righty. Let's talk about DeMar DeRozan. And we've, we've mentioned it in the beginning of the video. We'll continue to talk about it now. What is it specifically that we're hearing it's a one year prove it deal we've heard the lakers clippers the clippers have fallen out because they've spent their money but we've also heard the lakers and the heat as two teams so they want to do a sign and trade however demar derozan is realizing there's no money out there and that he should he doesn't he's saying he's not going to take the mid-level sec exception which is like 12.9 million dollars that he's only going to take less money if it's a one-year deal so he can go back into free agency next year now what does that mean where does he go it also you have to understand demar de rosen going to a sp specific team what if the kings are the dark horse because he's a cali guy and he's just like crap i'll just go there or like the golden state warriors but that's not happening. I was just joking around. He is a guy that I think he's looking He wants to make his money, but he also probably wants to be put in a situation. He has to be in a situation where he can play his style of basketball. He doesn't fit every team because of his ISO centric. So for me, he should have taken that two year, $80 million deal if he got it. But look, 
the one year deal works out if it goes well. So with DeMar DeRozan leaving the Bulls and teams deciding to spend their cap space on other th- players, DeMar DeRozan may be taking a one year deal at a lower contract figure than anticipated in order to become a free agent next year when far more teams are projected to have cap space. If DeRozan chooses to do a sign and trade, he has to sign a three year deal and is unable to recoup his value as he'll definitely get go down by three years time. So to Adrian Wojnarowski says, well, I think there's an interest in DeMar DeRozan, but that's kind of the contract that he might want just is not going to be available. It's not left out there in the marketplace. The Bulls are more than willing to work on a signing trade agreement to get him the years and money that he might want. But with the new side cap rules there, the, those are much more difficult for teams to do. The Lakers have interest. How do they acquire DeMar DeRozan? That becomes a much different scenario. LeBron James has talked about willingness to take significantly less money to open up their mid-level exception. I think DeMar DeRozan's case, it may not be as appealing to him, but it may look like a one-year deal somewhere. Let the market reset next year because if you do a sign and trade, it's going to be at least three years, and now you're locked into a three deal at the number you may not like. The Lakers are interested, but the mechanisms that will allow them to create a slot to acquire him, that's going to be a harder part and stuff when you go you give out big money and there's not always money left for a guy like DeMar DeRozan, who was an all-star recently, but we'll see what happens, end quote, Adrian Wojnarowski said. And at the end of the season, we heard, again, as I mentioned earlier, DeMar DeRozan had that two-year $80 million deal, and he turned it down for a longer deal. And similarly, when he challenged free agency in 2021, he he had a challenging free agency, and he signed a three-year $85 million deal that he has outperformed. And the Clippers and Lakers were options then. So it's just interesting. I don't know. What do you guys think? What would you guys do? I'm very curious to hear your opinions on this whole situation.